Well, welcome to another Martin Taylor's Guitar Conversations. Now, this is a slightly different guitar conversation because my guest isn't a guitar player, although he is a bit of a secret guitar player, I've just dis discovered. But um, to describe this, we, we've been friends for a, for a long time, and um, we've been talking about doing a little, little something together that could be very special for, for you. This is uh, my very good friend, Drew McAdam. Nice to see you again, Drew. It's lovely to see you as well. Thanks man. for coming along and sitting on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> now, I made some notes here because um, uh, whenever I try to describe what Drew does, I, I always get it, get it wrong. So um, uh, I've, I've made some notes about this and Drew will correct me if I'm wrong. But Drew, you're an entertainer, a mentalist and mind reader, also known as the human lie detector. You're a speaker and performer and mind play psych, uh, psychological illusion. Psychological illusion. It's the only way I can think of describing it. Really. That's it. Uh, you were the interrogator on Channel 5's TV show, Trisha Goddard, and a regular guest on STV The Hour, and you had your own BBC TV show. And you, you're on your way to a gig, and you very kindly popped in to see me. And uh, because we want to talk about... We'd mentioned this before, last time we had one of our little lunches together, and I was talking about a lot of my students that asked me for advice on performance nerves mm -hmm. and anxiety, mm -hmm. and you said to me, I can help them with that. Yep. So, it's, it's not true. It's pure psychology, um, what I do and how it happened to me, because um, I know it's hard to believe. Now, you've seen, if you've seen me, I'll go out in front of a live audience, theatre, whatever. I have absolutely no nerves. But it wasn't always like that. I suffered terribly before speaking in public on any level whatsoever. Um, it was horrendous. <clears throat> and just to give you a little bit of history, I was doing a charity gig one time before I was doing this full time. Mm. Um, and there was a... a an entertainment agent there, and he said, where have you been all my life? This is, I can get you gigs. I thought, this, this would be wonderful. A little bit of extra income would be a mm -hmm. tremendous thing. Um, and it was fine until I actually had to go and do the gig, and I would find myself driving to, to the venue, and I felt terrible. I mean, I just ill with stage nerves, with performance anxiety. And so often I'd thought, if I just turn the car around and go back home, this feeling will stop instantly. But I made myself go on and do it anyway. And I have a very good friend, a chap called Mark Salem. He's my mentor and professor of psychology. And I had a conversation with him one time and I said, look, I, I don't think I can do this performing anymore. It's, it's going to kill me. Is the the stage bad? nerves, it was wow. seriously that bad. And he carried out a little exercise with me, which I will carry out with you. Um, and those who are watching, so viewers can try the same thing because they'll have a very similar list. He did this with me and it changed almost instantly. Mm. So at the end of this, I'll explain how it changed. So let's have a quick list of all the physiological sensations that somebody has mm. when they have stage fright. Okay. So leading up to that. But of course, if you go on to stage and you're feeling nervous, the audience pick it up. They yes. know that you're nervous and, and you're in a you're in a, a dip which you have to come come over. You have to somehow yeah. beat that dip. So if you can be further up, even just when you walk onto stage, what you really want is somebody saying, oh he's really excited about this. This looks like he's going to enjoy himself. So are we. And it has a completely different dynamic. So sorry, yeah, I made a list. Is that right? Excellent, uh, excellent. Yeah. Because you, you asked me about this. I was mm -hmm, thinking mm -hmm. of all the things. And I have to say, first of all, that I've never had stage fright, stage nerves, performance nerves. I've always been as calm as a cucumber. It's life in general that makes me nervous and, <laughs> and anxious. So I'm, I'm in, in some ways, I'm not the the the, the best person to to mm -hmm. when I, when I, I'm asked this question because I don't have really an experience of that. So mm -hmm. I thought it'd be fantastic if, if you could speak. Yeah. yeah, I guess. Yeah, well, well, it is. But when I'm off stage, then I am nervous. But <laughs> it's, I think it's the feeling of control or something. But anyway, so um, there's a feeling of nausea. Right, so that pit of the stomach, you can yeah, feel it churning. Yeah. yeah, you've got the butterflies. Um, mm -hmm. 
trembling, sweaty palms. Sweaty palms, uh, yeah. That's cool. Nerves shaking, mm -hmm. heart rate going up, even like palpitations. Yep, yep. Yeah, sort of butterflies, um, sweaty palms, tre mm -hmm. trembling, can't sleep the night before. Right. Or even have trouble sleeping once you said, yeah, I'll do that. You've mm -hmm. accepted the gig. Mm -hmm. Then you know, waking up in in, that, in sweats that, in the middle of the night, thinking yeah. about why right. did I say okay. yes? So these are, these are the common physiological traits that you will get from nervousness. Mm -hmm. Now, you've just listed those for me, um, Martin. I want you to list for me the physiological traits when you feel excited about something. Okay, when I feel excited about something, I would say. Um, there's an uplifting feeling of the, my heart rate. <laughs> yeah, heart rate will go up, just that. All right, yeah, I see what you mean. Read out the list. All right, okay. Uh, yeah, sometimes you can feel like uh, in your stomach. The butterflies, you get excited about something. Uh, maybe sweaty palms, I don't know. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, if you're excited about it, anticipation, can't sleep because you're can't anticipating. Can't sleep the night before. Uh -huh. So it's all the same. It is exactly right. the same thing. Now, there was an experiment carried out, I think it was Philadelphia University, where they got 100 students and they gave them medication that would give them an elevated heart rate, give them butterflies, give them, you know, that sleepless feeling. Yeah. Half of them, they told them, this will make you feel nervous, like before an exam. The other half, they said, this will make you feel really excited, like a kid before Christmas. Mm. And the strange thing is that every single one of them reported back that they had experienced what they were told they would experience. Mm. Physiologically, it's exactly the same, but your brain says you're nervous. So what you have to do is tell your brain, I'm excited. And there's almost a moment of it going, oh, I didn't realize that. So what happened with me is just after having done that exercise, mm. I was driving to Dundee, I remember it so clearly, um, and I got the feeling, and I thought, oh, no, 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 please, no, no. And then I thought, no, no, this is excitement. I've got the same thing, I've got the butterflies. I've got... And I recaptured that feeling of almost like being a kid on Christmas Eve and all the excitement. I went on stage, had a, had a good gig. Second gig I went to do, very, very similar. Um, started to come on and thought, no, no, it's excitement. I, I'm really looking forward to this. This is going to be great. And yeah. actually faking it till I make it. By the time I did my third gig, I had no stage nerves and I've never had any since. It was well, just that, like that's that. That's quite amazing. It was like reprogramming the brain. And now when I walk out on stage, I'm walking out and I'm excited. And people can tell he's really looking forward to this. So are we. Well, you know, you've just explained to me... Um, why I don't get nervous, because I hadn't thought about it. When I'm asked, why, well, why don't you get nervous on stage? And it's because I'm excited about it. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. <laughs> you know, I'm, yeah. I'm, come sort of like three o'clock in the afternoon, if I'm, you know, I'm, gonna, I'm arriving somewhere in, in a town, um, and I, I know I'm gonna go to the hotel, get a quick shower, go and do the sound check. By the time I get on stage, I've got a, a kind of a routine of getting dressed and just have a little yep. warm up and everything. I'm so excited to get on, on stage, exactly. but I'm getting excited from about three o'clock in the afternoon. Yes, yes. Before that, I'm not actually thinking about the gig because I've got too many other uh -huh. things I've, I've got, to, got to deal with. Whereas somebody who's doing that, that's perhaps not done it as often, and I've seen you come out on stage and it's obvious that you're there to enjoy yourself. Mm. Um, somebody that hasn't done that as often is going to have that whole lead up of feeling all those things, but they're, they're letting their brain interpret it as being nervous. And so they're not enjoying it. When they walk out on stage, they look nervous, they're projecting it. You can't hide it, it's in the body language. The very thing I read when I'm doing mind reading, mm. it's really mm. reading body language and facial expressions. Mm. And the audience know, subliminally, they know yeah. this person's really nervous. Well, yeah, because you know when I do my, my solo shows, then it's, I just I know that when I walk on stage, I'm I'm look I'm really looking forward to getting on stage. I'm excited about it, but also because because of the preparation of many years as well. But uh -huh. um, just the general preparation, I know what I'm gonna do. I know I'm gonna change things around. I might do this, and that, but I, I'm in control of the situation. Mm -hmm. um, then. I'm excited about it because I think this is going to be this is going to be good. I'm going to really enjoy playing <laughs> exactly. playing this, and uh -huh. I'm, hopefully, the, 
uh, the audience are going to enjoy it, even if there's only one person that uh -huh. that really likes it. That's enough. So that's enough I mean, me. it changed me completely just in a very short period of time. And I'm it's all the same things on the same list. If, you write, if anybody writes out a list wow. of everything they feel when they're nervous and when they're excited, it's exactly the same. The only difference is happening in the mind. Well, thanks, Drew. I think you've um, you've maybe saved some careers because I do actually know. I can think of three guitar players I know that were that actually quit playing mm -hmm. because they couldn't deal with, with, with these mean? nerves, and they were. I understand uh, that. Maybe we should make, get them to watch this video, and I think that would be a good idea. Fantastic, absolutely fantastic, Drew. Thank you very much. Excellent. I tell you, before you go, yeah, I want Drew to do this because you know we get together with a, a bunch of friends of ours every so often. We go for lunches and. Um, Drew always seems to end up doing one of his um, little party pieces. An <laughs> effect, yes. A demonstration, a demonstration. Of an experiment. Yeah. Um, so, um, would you would you do a little Absolutely, spoon bending for me? Absolutely, of course, me? yes. Uh, I think a lot of people have seen this kind of thing on television. They think it's a camera trick, or the spoons are, are a bit, you know made of rubber, but covered in okay. silver paper. But I mean, you've seen me doing it with I've just many picked, times. I've I've been. Well, I'm sitting so close to you now. I've just like, picked cutlery off the table, and um, um, okay. we only need one with which to work. So, so just point to one. It really doesn't matter. Okay, that one. Okay. Martin, just take the end of the spoon, just hold it like that so that... Okay. The, that way? Yeah, and we can see it on the camera. Okay, see, okay. And all I do is I just stroke it very gently, and in my mind I'm asking the metal to bend. And if it doesn't bend, I think, please bend. Now, I'm not putting any pressure on that, am I? No. Hard, you're not hardly no. touching it. No. But what, what happens is I feel that it starts to go almost waxy. I can feel it happening now, it almost has the feeling of a candle. And then I just kind of test it to see if it's, yeah. Can you see, can you see that? The, yeah, just, yeah, the steel I can see that. just starts to melt, and there's no heat coming off it. Yeah, I'm hardly touching it. It's, it's, no isn't heat. it remarkable? And there's no kind of pressure here. Is no, there? no, no. Yeah. It's just this, the lightest of touches, <laughs> <laughs> and it's now it's just going like rubber now. I know. I mean, actually, man, just let that go a second. Oh. There it goes, <laughs> and there's no heat. To it. <laughs> <laughs> now, I mean, there you go. Are they, these are real spoons, yes. They're yeah. not. They're not plastic yeah, covered sure, in silver. Sure. Paper. Okay. Everybody thinks it's, it's got some, <laughs> like something to do with the um, yeah. something to do with the the, 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 the spoons themselves, or the rubbing. But it doesn't. It genuinely doesn't. And I don't do this one very often, but just for you. <laughs> Have you seen the film The Matrix? Oh God. There is no spoon. Oh, this is crazy. Isn't it? Isn't it great? That's why you're called a mentalist. Yeah. It's a mental. No. Yeah. Now, <laughs> just, just for this, I'm going to do this just to this camera, just so they can see it, but now I'm not even touching it. And you can just see it. <laughs> <laughs> well, my wife's going to be delighted with this. <laughs> oh, thanks, Drew. You know, um, we've not, we haven't got a, a free lunch out of this 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 demonstration yet. No, have we? no, no, we haven't. Almost no. a trick. It's not a trick, but it's a, a demonstration. Yeah. Um, but uh, thank you, Drew. Uh, absolutely fantastic, and you know. Um, you know, you say you're, you're you're an entertainer, but you know what you the information you've just given is really important, and I know that I'm going to get this going to get this video to as many not guitar players as many musicians as many performers mm -hmm. that I know because um, I know from uh, you know I've I've been backstage with other other musicians and so it's happened a lot with singers for some reason I, I don't mm -hmm. know and I, you know you you actually hear them. Uh, it, you hear him in the toilet actually mm -hmm. throwing mm -hmm. up and just in a terrible I've, state. I've, I've worked with singers exactly the same yeah. way. They went white, absolutely. Yeah, you know, the colour drained from the face and yeah. thinking you can't do this. And yeah. I took 10 minutes just to get them to yeah. do that exercise, told them about the, the experiment with the students, and you yeah. just the difference now that, you know, there are yeah. three that I've worked with and all three of them are out. So, so turn all this list, feeling sick, nerves shaking, palpitations, heart rate, butterflies, sweaty palms, trembling, can't sleep night before the gig, or 
can't sleep after you've put the phone down and you've uh, accepted the gig. Take all those feelings and just turn them from a ne negative into a positive. Don't even let them get into a negative. Just, just make them positive. Tell your brain it's excitement and it will believe you. Thanks, Drew. My pleasure. Fantastic. Thanks.